For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Political analyst Obri Majiki discusses why ANC Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa is not ahead in the ANC leadership race. Can you briefly explain why you say the system of propaganda is seen in this leadership battle? Well, think of each faction in the succession battle, particularly the dominant factions, which are behind Nkosa Zanadramini Zuma and Cyril Ramaphosa, as people in ships. What each faction must do is to convince its opponents that their ship is leaking and the ship will sink, and they will die. And the only thing that can save them is to jump ship and jump to their ship. So what they develop is a system of propaganda in which the representatives, the spokespeople, the propagandists, the strategists of each faction make the claim that their candidate is miles ahead of everyone else. And that is why, depending on which section of the media you believe, Gosa Zanatamini Zoma is ahead, or Cyril Ramaphosa is ahead. But both factions make the claim that their candidate is, is miles ahead. So this is part of a system of propaganda. Now, when it gets ugly, of course, two things must happen. Each faction must project the candidate of the opposing faction as the devil incarnate and project their own candidate as an angel. And therefore revelations about candidates occur in that context. You have reminded us about what happened at the Pologwane conference a decade ago and you also say that the defeats for NDZ will be a defeat for President Jacob Zuma. Why should we look at it in that way? Well, it, it seems to me that President Jacob Zuma, not in Kosasana Ramin Zuma, is the presidential candidate. In other words, Pulukwane must replay itself. And people must do some kind of uh, time traveling, travel to the future, to 2007 in Pulukwane, in which Jacob Zuma is humiliated and defeated by their preferred candidate. And of course, Zuma's image crisis um, has reinforced this feeling or this idea that he, not in Kosazana Dlamini Zuma, is the candidate to defeat, the candidate to beat. So if you look at the strategies of uh, the candidates, they position themselves in contradistinction to the weaknesses of Jacob Zuma and what the ANC has become as a result and what the country has become in the, as a result. They don't position themselves in contradistinction to Ngosazana Dlamini Zuma because they realize that Ngosazana Dlamini Zuma's strength is support from the Zuma camp, but that is also her weakness. So what they're trying to do is to exploit the president's uh, image crisis to the disadvantage of Nkosa Zanadlamini Zuma. Aubrey, you have grouped the seven candidates into three categories. Can you briefly explain why you have done that and how do they differ? Well, the SG, Gwede uh, Mandashe, mm -hmm. has characterized the race as a stampede because this is the highest number of ANC candidates, I think, ever um, in a leadership contest, or at least since 1991 when the ANC held its first national conference after its unbanning. Now, I've, I've grouped the candidates into three. For me, you have the two front runners, obvious front runners, that is Cyril Ramaphosa and uh, Dlamini Zuma. Now, all indications, nomination processes, statements that people are making about the rates, indicate quite clearly that the two front runners are Dlamini Zuma and Ramaphosa. And then you have the compromise candidate, that is Zuelim Kize. There is this idea that Zuelim Kize is going to emerge as the compromise candidate and be elected ANC president. In my view, that's not going to happen. 
simply because a compromise candidate emerges under very specific conditions. First of all, the contending factions must accept that there is a stalemate between them. And if they accept that there is a stalemate between them, they must also accept that their candidate is not going to win the leadership battle. And if they accept that, they will go out to look for another candidate, a compromise candidate. They may go for the same candidate or go for different candidates. When they go for the same candidate, they may even come to an agreement that the, the two factions will support that same candidate and some horse trading will happen around other positions in the top leadership um, of the party. That situation has not arisen, in my view, is not going to arise, and therefore Zolim Kiza is not a compromise candidate and therefore is not the next president of the ANC. Then you have what I call the rest of the candidates. Now, we must not be dismissive of them because they may play the role of splitting the vote either to the advantage of Dlamini Zuma or to a disadvantage, or the advantage of uh, Ramaphosa or to his disadvantage. But also, if they withdraw, they will call upon their supporters to support either candidate. And therefore, they may play an important role, especially if the contest is going to be very close. Do you think CR17's decision to share his late at a political rally was a tactical mistake that could cost him at the conference? It, it was unwise. Um, it's, it's not the first time during this campaign period. And for me, the campaign period started last year. Uh, you remember that he confirmed in December 2016 that he was available, he would be available for the leadership contest. And he has made several mistakes. Um, he has been imprudent several times during this period. But I think announcing a slate in public is to endorse factional politics, first of all when he has been trying to project himself as a candidate who is not for factionalism. In fact, all of them claim that they are not factionalists and they are opposed to factionalism. But what it does also is to expose certain people as being part of a particular faction and may force them to distance themselves from that slate. And that is why, for instance, Gwede Mandashe comes out in his capacity as SG of the ANC, critical of uh, the move by Ramaphosa to announce his slate publicly. But more importantly, I think he has compromised uh, Mandashe because Mandashe as SG of the party is the host of the national conference. Already questions have been, are being raised about the authenticity of credentials. And he may be at the center of the storm. He may be right in the eye of uh, the storm if a battle ensues during the national conference around the issue of uh, credentials. But I think his biggest mistake is not even announcing the slate itself. It's the content of the slate. If you look at Nalide Pando, for me that is a very uh, difficult candidate uh, to sell. Nalide Pando is going to be a hard sell. In fact, when I looked at the crowd he was speaking to when he announced his slate, I don't think that crowd was convinced. So the crowd, yes, supports Ramaphosa, uh, as many others do, but I don't think it is the case that those who support Ramaphosa necessarily support this slate, particularly the idea that Naledi Pando must be the deputy presidential candidate. And then the sense of Um As I say in another article, I personally like Senzo Mkunu as a politician. 
But I do not believe he has national appeal. He has the kind of appeal um, that gives Ramaphosa the kind of national platform he needs. Now, if you are talking about a very popular presidential candidate, it would not matter that some of the people on his slate do not have national appeal uh, because his own national appeal will simply rub off the slate and that slate becomes a winning slate. Mm. I am not certain yet that uh, Ramaphosa has crossed the threshold and should be seen as the dominant candidate. What do you think of CR17's promises in Soweto recently? You know, last week I was at a discussion on populism. Mm. Uh, I was part of a panel with people like uh, uh, John Kerry, the former Secretary of State mm. of the United States of America. Because populism is becoming a serious challenge. Now, of course, we spend an inordinate amount of time being critical of populism mm. and not enough time being critical of the causes of the populism, that is the inequality and the excesses of uh, political and economic elites. So I listened to Ramaphosa and what he says yesterday to me sounds as populist as the populism of those who support President Jacob Zuma, who without any credible basis are making the promise of radical economic uh, transformation. So it seems that if either Lamine Zuma wins or Ramaphosa wins, South African voters will be exposed or will be subjected to populism by other candidates. I can't see any change in our economy that will make his government deliver a million jobs in five years. He talks about uh, growth of 3% next year. I don't see that um, happening either. Either he is genuine, but his calculations are, correct, are incorrect, or he is not genuine and therefore is being populist. And the promises he made in Soweto were nothing but part uh, of a, a vote-catching exercise. And lastly, we now hear of rumors that the NC elective conference will collapse. What do you think? Well, I, I think the delegates will gather in Nazareth. Uh, I think the conference will start. I am not sure it will go beyond the credential stage. If it does go beyond the credential stage, um, there's a possibility that the losers will go to court. Because remember, uh, the faction that wins the battle over credentials, in all probability, will win the leadership contest. So the first battle to win is the credentials battle. And therefore, there is a very strong chance that those who lose the credentials battle may, may want to collapse the conference or mount a court challenge mm -hmm. at the end of the conference. Mm -hmm. That was political analyst Oprima Jigri speaking to Krima Media's polity about why Deputy President Ramaphosa is not ahead in the ANC leadership race.